Good morning. Today is the 28th day of December in this 2021st year of our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is our last day visiting our family in Williamsport, Maryland. We'll be heading to Baltimore later this morning. I uh, pray travel mercies for others that are out and about in uh, the weather that is a little overcast, perhaps some rain today. Uh, we've had a good visit here and anticipate a good couple of days with uh, Christina and Matt and the kids in Baltimore. Uh, a reading today from the fifth chapter of 2 Corinthians. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view. <clears throat> we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entreating and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making his appeal through us. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, that in him we might become the righteousness of God. This is the word of our Lord. A reading from the book Struggle of Prayer by Donald E. Bloch. The biblical Christian can only pray empty-handed, as the 13th century Dominican preacher William Peraldus expressed it, or as Augustine observed, the best disposition for praying is that of being desolate, forsaken, stripped of everything. Unlike the ritualist, we know that any sacrifice we bring before God is stained by sin and therefore unworthy of acceptance apart from the meditation and intercession of Jesus Christ. Our hope depends not on the right technique of the proper phrase or gesture which, burdens, uh, which borders on magic, but on the promise of God to look with favor on those who throw themselves on his mercy and who acknowledge the efficacy of the atoning sacrifice of his son, Jesus Christ, for their redemption. As I see it, true prayer is neither mystical rapture nor ritual observance nor philosophical reflection. It is the outpouring of the soul before a living God, the crying to God out of the depths such a uh, prayer can only be uttered by one convicted of sin, by the grace of God, and moved to confession by the Spirit of God. True prayer is an encounter with the holy in which we realize not only our creaturely, creaturelessness and guilt, um, but also the joy of knowing that our sins are forgiven through the atoning death of the divine favor, Savior, Jesus Christ. It's such an encounter. We are impelled not only to bow before God and seek his mercy, but also to offer thanksgiving for grace that goes out to undeserving sinners. The word of the Lord. a minor adjustment here. There we go. And let us pray. Lord, we come before you this day as your humble servants who have been empowered by your holy word and by the gift of your grace abundant to share the good news, the good news of this season of Christmas tide that you have come among us to show us mercy to redeem us from our sin and to show us a more perfect way. We thank you for the gift of Christmas tide, for Emmanuel, you who have chosen to be with us, to grant us your help and your mercy 
to give us that new day, that new day that comes through reconciling our past guilt and sin and empowering us for good. We thank you for Christmastide and the times that we might share with those whom we care for in love and others who need the depth of your love, that we might share the witness of good news through the sharing of what we have. Bless us, O Lord, this day. Grant travel mercies to all who move about and travel in this holiday season. Be of help and encouragement to those that are alone and those who grieve. Pray for my friend Griff Payne as he is now in your loving presence. He loved you dearly, O Lord, and served you faithfully. And we ask that you would give encouragement and hope and help to his friends and family as they grieve. Be present with all who seek your healing presence, your continued healing for, for Becky and for Sarah, who have found great courage in their fight against cancer. For each in our congregational families that we commend to your care and to your nurture. And, uh, and for others that we lift up before you in our prayers this day. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you, to be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord this day and forevermore. Amen.